I like you. I'm going to analyze our difference. We're, you know, maybe two inches apart on this other very related subject. Um, but it's like if somebody's two miles away, you can split it up into a hundred chunks and that's the size of the granularity, the size of the changes you recognize as steps of change. And if it's only two inches, you can still do a hundred and it's just tinier. And that's what we're looking at because it is important. So uh, I noticed you put the Creative Commons attribution. So this video I am playing the audio from is Pax Gorilla. And here we go. Cheers to your fellow hero. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start where you left off, and that was with your statement that you repeated that we are just a colony of bacteria. Now, I'm not, I don't want to get too hung up on words, but I just I have a problem with that because there's a huge part of doing biology and even just thinking is about drawing lines and classifying things. And if we aren't going to give ourselves the joy of being able to draw a line when we see it change, then why are we even you know, why do we verbalize things? Why do we even try to talk about anything? Pax, do you see what you've done there? Because I didn't say that we can't make distinctions. I'm arguing about what distinctions we can make. The, uh, the joy of drawing the line is not what justifies drawing the line. And you are saying, <clears throat> I guess I should say for other people, that um, there's some fundamental distinction. Uh, you were saying that our cells are not altruistic, but E. coli is altruistic. Now, granted, our cells do even just to the millionth degree these kinds of behaviors that you're going to call altruistic and E. coli. You say that doesn't count because they're a part of us, and so they're just helping themselves. Somehow, you're ignoring that they're distinct from their environment and I know you admit that as well but in that assertion you're ignoring that no they're still single cells and they're still independent even if they're fixed in place I mean trees are fixed in place they're independent organisms still to the neck compared to the tree next to them right so the, these are individual cells they really are and you know so one way of putting it is that you're igno ignoring a distinction, but all I'm really saying is, uh, all I really said was that we're just a, a colony of bacteria. And the only mistake in that is, of course, I'm just using bacteria to mean single cell life form. We're not bacteria, that's a different categorization. But I admitted that right away before anybody even called me on it. I'm not ignoring distinctions between bacteria you know, and uh, cells and mammals. I'm not saying there's no distinction. I'm saying that we are just a colony of bacteria. What is the distinction, or of single cells? What is the distinction? Well, the characteristics of that colony, all the colonies are different, right? Okay, so I don't really think that's a, um, it's not really a fair thing. I mean, it should be obvious maybe that that's fine, but that I did not say we can't make distinctions, right? So that's just sort of thrown out there. Exactly. Because of a distinction you have that I say isn't well justified. And throwing such a, uh, such a sort of random argument that distinctions are justified. I mean, you can't get a much weaker justification for a distinction than that distinctions can be good things, yes. That does not mean the, the distinction we're debating is automatically good, though. It's just one amorphous blob. There's no differentiation of anything. And the difference between a single-celled organism and a multi-celled organism, and the difference between their cells, is so vast. It's well, see, you're comparing the single-celled organism and its parts to a multi-celled organism and its parts, and that's obviously not the comparison sh that should be made. For human beings, obviously, we call that an animal, and we call that, a, and it is treated different than a colony of E. coli. But when we're talking about single-celled creatures and their interaction with us, they interact with our cells, and they do so on the same scale. It's the parts of the bacteria, obviously, are comparable to the parts of 
the cells. So you're calling it an organism and us an organism, but we're not an organism on that scale. On that scale, we're a society of organisms. Now, the planet might be an organism, right? But on our scale, it would be a society or culture of organisms in the scientific sense of culture. Right? So this is how identification works. This is the holistic nature of life that we have discovered, right? This is not an optional thing. We didn't know this. It wasn't obvious. Boom. Turns out we are made up of millions. You know, it's like, wow, there's little tiny life forms that big. Holy shit, we're made of them. Okay. I see this argument you're making as sort of a denial of that. And maybe also a misunderstanding. Sorry to be calling them mistakes. I mean, I call it when I thought you have it totally right, too. So, okay. Um, maybe a misunderstanding of this leveling, that one organism can actually be a society of other organisms, and so there's an echelon nature that the single-celled creature is comparable to our cells. We're like a society, just like the culture of E. coli is like its society, and its society is much more primitive than us. Its individuals, not necessarily more primitive, but definitely less intercooperative, less altruistic. Okay, that's why I don't want to say it's changed fundamentally so that now it's not altruistic. If you can call that behavior altruistic in E. coli, give credit to our the cells in our body that are super duper that way. Okay. It's billions of years apart, it's worlds apart. But if in that huge space we can't draw a line somewhere, then why are we talking about it? The the billions of years apart is is cells forming societies that look like us. I mean, that the single-celled life form never evolved into us. It evolved into colonies, and the colonies were us. It's evolved the whole time, the differentiation, and it has remained a single cell. The, the cell wall never became our skin. Certain, instead, s skin cells became our skin. See? So it's not, that's not the comparison of the organism. The comparison of the organism, it's interesting because you've been one of the rare people to say, okay, you know, crazy cat. You've been one of the few people to say, oh, okay, paramecium are behaving and thinking and being cats. But you don't see that in our cells? You, well, you, surely you've seen the white blood cells chasing down bacteria, right? So, I mean, yeah. It's, you know, a self-replicating, independent organism and a specialized cell that has pretty much just one thing that it does. Um, one, this independence, I would think that it's the story that you were covering with the E. coli altruism and this sharing antibodies or antitoxins, um, that that shows an interdependence between them. And the idea that cells do one thing, think about it. See, I know you know all these. This is one reason I want to press you on this, because I know you've admitted these things for the, for the paramecium. Why? The cells don't do one thing. The, the cells in the body do all the things. They split. They, they do all of the things. When you're saying they do one thing, you mean they're one service to the body. Are you really going to reduce the, these cells to their one service to the body? Now that suddenly they're essential being. They used to be independent, and when they became us, they got enslaved. I refuse. No. They voluntarily, or, you know, evo voluntarily, evolutionarily, evolved into a niche in our shape. It's just not the same and, you know, not gonna... I... Oops, I accidentally stopped it, but yeah, you're saying that it's not the same. I just, I just don't get that. You know that the biology of cells in bodies is, um, they do all of the things. The nutrients, the reacting to environment, I mean, their motility is different, but some cells, in, single cells in nature, you know, it's not a, a part of it. Of course, the motility, some of them even move around. I mean, uh, and really the, the blood moves around so they don't have to swim around. The, the nutrients are, are brought to them. 
but you know they do all those chemical things plus they do a lot more um, with the more sophisticated genetics and extra messenger molecules or at least uh, dip, extra long ones and different ways of encoding and so you know they why are you you sound like somebody talking about paramecium right they're so simple they don't count this is baffling to me i i don't think that you should limit yourself to not being able to draw any distinctions when you're talking about biology because okay that again see are you accusing me of not drawing distinctions in biology I'm drawing one right here between you and your cells that's pretty much all that biologists have ever done but anyway when I was talking about altruism and I think when anyone talks about altruism in relation to animals but they don't mean to bring in all the philosophical baggage of the term I just mean it in the way that animal behavioralists talk about how one organism will take something of itself or even give itself whole self or risk that for its clan, for its family, or to otherwise promote its genetics. Okay, so first you're saying that I'm denying distinctions in biology, which is way extreme claim to make about what I've said, I think. And now you're saying that I'm bringing in philosophical baggage about altruism. So what did I say that contradicts the, you know, folk definition of altruism? See, that, that has nothing to do with my point again. I was saying, if you're going to call what the E. coli does altruism, then of course you have to call what white blood cells do altruism or other cells in the body now i personally don't like the word altruism i think it's bullshit altruism is always because it's good to help your relatives and you're related to everything so it can spread out pretty far if you're enlightened enough to see your connection to everything where did the philosophical baggage come in because from where i'm sitting it looks like you have a polite way of you know casting a few wild assertions um, when all I'm saying is that your argument sounds a lot like they're too simple when in reality they're more complex they're more sophisticated if anything but I don't like to say that because you know paramecium have evolved just as long they're very sophisticated and so the sophistication is in different directions and when I or anybody says they're more sophisticated we're talking about the, the sophistication of their cooperation so, yes, there's a genetic benefit if that does indeed promote one's genetics. Um, so the, the idea... But you know that that E. coli colony is all a family, right? That's very related, very... Re really related. Almost call it a clone, but then people are like, it's exact copy, so it doesn't count. They just don't get that either, but it's not exact and it, whatever. But if you're saying that in the body, the genetic, the sheer genetic thing explains it, yeah, that's what explains it in the E. coli 2 packs, gorilla. Of inclusive fitness is that you are most likely to give of yourself as or to sacrifice yourself for those who are the most genetically similar to yourself your brothers, sisters, parents, and then, you know, so on but what the E. coli were doing was giving something of themselves for those who were less similar for those who were different from themselves in their family and that's what's so interesting no, 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 no those cells were just in need. For all you know, if it was a different toxin, the other cells would have produced the antibody and the, the other cell would have needed it. You know, that's far more likely. They are beginning specialization, right? They are all viable. 
and and as they specialize and and they roll the dice in each single cell so maybe it can have the machinery to fight one toxin but not three but between a whole colony they can easily cover the three and that's what's happening is that they were actually promoting genetic diversity they weren't trying to exclude the ones who were weak so wait you think that that principle you mentioned is contrary to promoting genetic diversity well it obviously isn't yeah i'm sure you know why it's not First of all, mono, genetic monoculture is a danger. That's how sex and gender all got developed because single cells learn how to promote genetic diversity and as we show with uh, conjugation and single cell life forms, they even trade. This is an issue. For their survival, they needed genetic diversity. Helping genetic diversity, those are. it's not like they were helping some other bacteria entirely and if they were, it would be a symbiotic relationship. And that's what explains altruism, and it's still a beautiful thing. It can be paying forward. It's not quid pro quo, but it doesn't mean it's not good for you or a good deal, or that there's some selfless thing, or that certainly that that there's some uh, a difference. I mean, I'm a colony of cells that cooperates, and I cooperate with other colonies of cells that are genetically related, and I cooperate with. I want to get up clean water in Africa, and 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 just take a month off the Iraq war and use that money to get clean water in Africa and they're related to me and it's pretty damn distance but for I think for a colony of single-celled creatures that's pretty freaking enlightened that uh, it's managed to become in terms of supporting genetic diversity and and I don't see how I can't say that as a colony of cells with nerve cells that, that have this special coordination if those nerve cells come up with the idea of of helping distant relatives in Africa I think a colony of single-celled creatures came up with the idea of helping another colony of them millions of colonies of them in Africa I mean why can't I use that language what's offensive about that who were different from themselves. They were promoting diversity. And that's interesting because it seems that humans have just now realized that maybe we don't all need to look the same. Maybe biodiversity is good. And we've realized the huge significance of having multiple forms of life. And so much variety is so good. But One thing, one of the main jobs of a, of a colony of single silk life forms in the form of a mammal is creating reproductive cells that take part of the genes just, just so that they can be mixed. We are way better at mixing our genes. Yes, it's a, there's a million, trillions of copies of it, and then we go, okay, let's rip half of it off a couple, keep making them. That huge revelation was stored in this little organism that only has like 4,200 genes and <laughs> that significant data was there to promote biodiversity. And I Why were you putting down our cells again as just simple do one thing machine cogs? No, you're, that's, that's how I'm looking at I mean, I, what I'm seeing is that you're praising cooperation, and then at the top of the curve here, you're saying it isn't even cooperation, and that the things doing it aren't even smart enough to cooperate or something. I didn't read that from someone else. That was my take. Maybe someone else has a different take. Maybe I've misunderstood something, but that's what it looks like they're doing is promoting biodiversity through self-sacrifice. I would... I don't... How is it self-sacrifice? They help everything survive. Being in a big col colony of E. coli is good for the, for the genetic gradient in there. 
two, I would assume that in a colony of E. coli, they were all pretty related, except for their own, uh, you know, mutation built in. To, you know, I would assume they were pretty related. And I find that very interesting. Well, me too. I find yes, that it is super interesting. I think we could say we have that in ourselves. How would me saying that we're just a colony of single-celled creatures in any way... No, obviously I think it's interesting too. Now look, I, I was trying to remain real calm because you're real polite, whatever. I don't want to... <laughs> but I did get a little, I well, don't know how to come across, but you know, I got a little... Because I... Man, I, I'm offended, you know, but I, I don't mind. I like people to say these things, but I'm going to say back that Yes, I am a bit offended. You took such, you know, spurious arguments as that, you know, my position uh, relies on there being no distinctions in biology when it's really just a distinction you were making. Um, that I was using a um, philosophy baggage laden uh, concept of, of altruism, you know. And less so, just sort of, huh? About about you sounding like a lot of people have been talking about single-celled life forms and their abilities. That's how you're talking about the cells in our body. That doesn't make any sense. You can't not know that our cells are do all of the stuff those cells do. Um, more or less, all the kinds of functions. Certain ones are limited, but, you know, they still split even. They don't conjure. Because that would be pointless. That's a part of their evolution. But they're pretty sophisticated. And they have a lot of extra things for being co-op, for acting in a hyper-cooperative way. So I think, yeah, 